I'm Chris from Windows, and hey, you can do this. Because this is Air Windows Air 3. Look at that, isn't it cute? It is tiny. And that is because this is a Reaper uh, host and it turns into that dual knob shape when you make the window small enough. We can also turn it into sliders, but you can't really use sliders when it's too little. So what is Air 3? Air has always been about me exploring ways of doing high frequency plugins naturally, as you would expect. Here's the thing. I started investigating a kind of plugin coming out of, it's, it's another one of my uh, science and stock market based filter plugins where people have gone to great effort to try to make magical formulas that predict things like stock market moves and such against the noise, identify what's actually going on. Or in this case, scientific uh, algorithms designed to pull uh, data information out of noise and in so doing, correctly identify what the underlying value is. And I reconstructed a plugin called Kelman. It is a uh, kind of filtering called Kelman filtering, which is not to say that I necessarily did it perfectly, but I got into the exploration of it. And then I started extending the principle upon which it worked even further. Kelman does a thing where it's trying to track the direction that the sound is going, or indeed the direction that the sound is changing, similar to stuff that I've done in say DBS and acceleration and so on. But I kind of took it to a whole different level. And in trying to extend it beyond what Kalman actually does, I came up with this funny thing, Air 3 and it's additional layers of, um, I'm not sure what I want to call it, not so much uncertainty, but it's the kind of thing where I say, if I am tracking change and then I'm tracking the rate of change and then I'm tracking the rate of the rate of the rate of change, it you layer these kinds of things on in order to try to get the Kalman filter to identify not only is it at a particular level or going in a particular direction, but it is taking a particular kind of curve and continuing it. Because what the Kalman filter does, and I'll let you hear sound again soon, what the Kalman filter does is it tries to do that and then will preferentially take outside data in or continue with what it's doing based on how close the outside data is to its projection. And we get stuff like this. This is air and ground. But what that basically means is we have the highs and then we have everything else. So I can do this. There's just your air band. Now I intend to use this for things. The idea is I want to move in the direction of the most recent, well, there's there's a whole other question as to whether this should be the most recent. Um, I'm trying to design console X. I have a console uh, nine that can come out, and that's going to be a sort of extension off of a fix that I have for console six, because I identified a way where I can make the linearity of console six as it goes through the zero point way better. It's more along the lines of the the perfidiousness of floating point numbers in computers. I thought that I had figured out all the details with how floating point can lie to you, but instead, not only is there quantization on the outside extremes, the loudest sounds of quant floating point numbers, 
Turns out you can also have inaccuracy going through the smallest possible numbers. And this is fixable. There is a project out there called Herbie that tries to fix inaccuracies in floating point numbers. And I was able to revisit some of the stuff that I've done using this. And that's kind of that's part of where all of this came from. So there's going to be a update in place for console six simply because I can keep exactly the same sound that it has, but remove that tiny distortion. And it also gave me a way of reevaluating that and doing a slightly different console type calculation, which I'm going to be calling console nine. And that's more subtle than console six, which tended to be fairly obvious but it goes beyond that because the Kalman filter and air two could lead to, <coughs> excuse me, could lead to a whole other approach to Wear Windows Console that's no longer about imitating classic consoles. Instead, we can use this capability. And here's the air band subtracted completely. You'll notice it doesn't sound as if anything's been done. It's not simply a filter. It's a little more complicated than that. It's doing what I kind of wanted to call AI, but that makes people think of like stable diffusion and MP3 sound and stuff that's not great and is not likely to become great anytime soon. So it's more along the lines of this is more air windows exploring weird algorithms and bringing them to audio. And here's what we've got again for you know, ride symbols. This is no air band. That is it with the air band. And here's only airband. This is running at 96K. It operates a little bit differently depending upon what you're using. But uh, we can also fire up another thing, which is here's the kinds of things you can do with Air 3 now that we've got this uh, algorithm enhanced high frequency band thing going on. We can have a track which barely has any highs. It's very heavy in the bass and it's lacking brightness. And so, we can bring the highs right out. And there you have it. So, I'm talking about all this stuff like Kalman and the uh, console versions coming up because you're getting Air 3 because somebody showed up to one of my live streams where I sometimes work on this stuff. I was working on these things, in fact, just over the last week. I'll tend to burn rubber on this for a while and then do a week where I'm just on Minecraft or whatever, but then go back. And somebody showed up and was enthusiastic about getting to use Air 3 sooner rather than later. And here you are. This is because somebody hung out with me during the live streams when I'm doing the coding of these things, which sometimes can be frustrating and difficult. I remember this last week. I was struggling like mad over a plugin that I've been developing called Discontinuity, which is very key to what I'm going to be doing with console X when it comes out. I have to work on that and test it, but that's the one where we're going to have Kalman filters and this air filter and discontinuity, which lets you really accurately lock in the sound of air over a given distance. This is going to be the Sonic Depth plugin, and that's coming out probably pretty soon too. But yeah, show up to one of the live streams and you can request what comes out first or, or last or next. And I'm working on a pretty good backlog now 
of cool new things to bring out. Like I haven't even told you about tri Triangulate. There is a plugin that will make pretty darn excellent uh, triangle waves out of signs. If you give it a sign that's not full scale, it no longer does a perfect triangular wave, which it's not actually as perfect as you might want, but it has its own real character to it. If you give it a sine wave that is less than full scale, rather than going to a lovely fine point, it will go to a neat rounded point of still a triangle wave. So that's, that's going to be very exciting too. There's a lot of stuff that's coming out where, yeah, it's going to be fun to show. But for now, one last little example. You can do this. This is just a drum track. But it can be a drum track with a huge amount of high frequency boost. Or cut. And that's the filter that's likely to show up in uh, console X when I get it done. But, like I said, show up to the live streams and understand I have not yet finished putting out letter to console designs. One of the things that I was working on this last week was incorporating the alterations between capacitor and capacitor 2, where capacitor 2 is the one that uses a frequency modulation to simulate the sound of certain, uh, specifically it's the company Murata making ceramic capacitors, and they measured that the cutoff frequency modulated with voltage pressure, which of course means frequency modulation. This is different from what's happening with discontinuity, which is modulating over um, a small delay in uh, sound. It's modulating the speed of sound, basically. Whereas the capacitor is modulating a cutoff frequency, which is different which is to say that discontinuity lets you do the sound of air being transmitted through space, and it does a fantastic job of doing that, and you can see that very soon. But the capacitor 2, which you have, like you can use capacitor 2 now, capacitor 2 modulates the cutoff frequency of a simulated capacitor to give you more of an analog type sound. And I was not applying this to, for instance, the pair filter, which is used in console MC and console MD and console LA. But I had not applied what I learned in capacitor 2, and I have now done those experiments, and I can now do a, a pair filter based crossover that uses a, uh, that type of analog simulation and I've worked with the sound of that filter, and I can put that out too. But I've mentioned before that if I was to go in and try to do, for instance, an SSL or something like that, I'd probably be wanting to use something more similar to biquads because it is what I would call more of an over-designed console than some of the really classic analog consoles. It's not as simple as that really old school stuff but it's designed to be much more accurate, so it's likely to have sharper crossovers. And you can use multiple biquad filters and stack them to do really good sharp crossovers and things and have a lot more control over it. And biquads are sort of like bog standard DAW filters. They're not interesting. I use them sometimes for the aliasing filtering in some of my stuff. That thing with the capacitor too, it also applies to biquad filters. And I can put that out as well. And we can have a uh, more modern, giant, huge console thing like an SSL type based on 
multiple stages of biquads, but with this slight addition to modulate them in this slightly analogy way. And use the aliasing reduction filtering over a large scale topology for a console that lets you do a steeper filtering that's distributed across an entire mix, which is my preferred way of dealing with aliasing. I'm going to be pretty busy, as you might imagine. For now, I hope you enjoy Air 3, because that is what I have for you today. Feel free to show up on the live streams and ask for particular things I've mentioned to come out sooner or later. You don't get to have Console X immediately. That has to be tested. I'm not sure how well it's going, all the aspects of it are going to work out. But I do still have to put out a, a variety of um, lettered console designs. Like I've not, I've not done a Neve. I have not done the uh, Trident Day range concept that I had. There's a bunch of stuff that is still waiting. There is a uh, car alarm going off. And the fact that I'm looking to move forwards into uh, console X, and probably that's where my attention is going to go, doesn't stop the fact that some of this other stuff will lend itself to the analog simulations. And I know as much as I might be all excited about doing a completely new thing that nobody's done before and maybe getting a new kind of sound happening that we haven't had before rather than just more dad rock stuff off of classic consoles. I know that people do like the sound of those classic consoles and that classic stuff. And I do have a soft spot in my heart for it. So what's coming next? We'll see. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.